The rough agenda for tonight is uh, we're going to start with the food and drink, which we've already done. We're actually kind of on time tonight, which is nice. And then these are the opening remarks. They're already almost done. And then I'm going to do a little uh, mini course that we've been kind of having like uh, persist over the last like seven or eight meetups. So basically, we're taking a look at the static site generator Hugo. And we're just taking little chunks of that and going through and showing some demos about how to set some of this stuff up. Okay, so this is where we are in the Hugo mini course. So we did an overview of the folders and files. We did some templating, uh, theming from scratch. We did another version of templating since it was a bigger topic than it, uh, one uh, night warranted. Then we did some style uh, courses. So basically talking about uh, setting up uh, resources and using Google, or, sorry, Hugo pipes. And that allows you to basically concatenate um, style sheets and things like that and minify them. And uh, then we had a couple of months of breaks in a row, and now we're going on to the component section. So uh, web design these days is kind of moving towards components. It allows you to, to scope easier and reuse things throughout a site. So I'm just gonna show one way that you can approach this in Hugo to basically break your style up into individual components. And I'm thinking this will, assuming I can get through this tonight, uh, this will probably be the last section we'll do on the Hugo mini course because there's a lot of cool Jamstack topics to cover. So I'm open to other suggestions and I'd love if someone else wants to come and lead one of these kind of mini series to keep like this like drumbeat of this kind of course going. So come and talk to me if someone's interested in doing that. Okay, so I'm gonna hop into it. Let's see, I'm gonna sit down so it's a little easier for me to run this. So this is essentially our current Hugo site. So this is the, the, the basic folder and file structure. Can folks see this? Is it big enough? Okay. And this is the website that we've been working on. It's um, not much to look at, but it is functional. And, and if you go back, we have a YouTube series of the last few of these tutorials. So you can check out how we got to this point and you can see some of the back end workings of how this is set up. But tonight, essentially, I'm going to look into like breaking this into a component architecture. So let's take a look at what that might entail. So under your content here, this is our data source and we just have a series of markdown files in here. And the home page corresponds to this underscore index.markdown file. And essentially what that is, is it starts with some front matter. So you denote front matter with these little hyphens. So there's three minus signs above and below this. And then there's key value pairs, which are written in YAML syntax. And Hugo has this uh, system where there are specific named key values that actually um, mean something. So title is a specially named key value. And if you go to the Hugo documentation, you can see which are reserved keywords. But I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna actually add a custom keyword here. I'm gonna name it components. Now you could name this anything, so we could name it components with an S, it doesn't really matter because this is a custom value. And then through here, we could actually start going through and adding different component values. So for instance, maybe we want something like a hero image that goes across the top of the screen. And let me just uh, add some default value here. I'm gonna say I'm a hero. And then maybe you want something like a grid. So we're gonna add a grid. I'm a grid and maybe you want something like a, we'll say like a text blurb. So this is a blurb, I'm a blurb. Okay, so we've added this to our data source, but how do we go about getting this to actually appear on our site? Let me just save this. And for folks who hadn't seen the previous tutorials, essentially we have this layouts folder here, and this is the HTML structure of our website. And inside the layouts, there's a specially named folder called underscore defaults. And essentially, if you don't have a specific layout for a certain content type, like this blog post is a, a type of content, it, it falls back to the default folder. So this is the catch-all for things. And since we haven't specified any specific templates for these basic pages, it's going to fall back to that default folder. And then within here, we have a couple of different specially named uh, HTML files. We have a single.html, we have a list.html. And this basically is Hugo's way of designating is this a list of information or is this like the end node for a piece of information? So 
for instance, like a blog page, if you go to someone's blog, you have a list of all the blog posts, that's the list page. And then if you were to click into one of those, that would be the single.html. So we're gonna be interested in this list.html because the home page on Hugo is basically treated as a list page. Now, you could have a more specific template here. You could have like a home.html or index.html, but since we don't have that, we're going to this list page. Okay, so we have some structure here. Hopefully this is something that you can see. Uh, basically, we have our title. It's wrapped in this like HTML wrapper that we, we talked about previously. And then we, we cycle through some blog posts and that essentially is what we're seeing right here, right? So we have a couple blog posts. We have our title here that corresponds to our title. And what we can start doing here is we could, start, we could add a range. And essentially what the range does, it's like a for loop in Hugo. It's a, a Go template syntax. And we could range over this thing called params. Now what params is, it's essentially a way to aggregate anything that is not one of the specially named components, right? So since, or specially named keys in the YAML syntax. So since components is just something that we made up, we have to get it out of the params in Hugo. So we do dot params dot components. And notice here that we capitalize this components, even though it's not capitalized over here. So I think this has something to do with the way that Go does exporting of variable values. So just capitalize it so you can get access to it. And essentially what we can do here is we can just end our range. So end our for loop. And inside here, we can print the current context of this for loop, right? So this is going through and it's getting all the components here. So each one of these is going to be the current context of what we're printing out. So let's just save that. Okay. So you can see over here that we're actually printing out some maps and you can think of maps. If you're not familiar with Go or uh, another programming language that use maps, think of this just as kind of like an array with these keys and values here. So we, we've printed these out. So basically we're saying, okay, this first map has a key of hero and a value of I'm a hero. And then we have grid and I'm a grid. And that stuff is corresponding to these values here. So great, we're getting those values out. That's awesome. Now, how do we actually start thinking about getting these to the page in some structured fashion? Let's come over here and we're gonna use this construct called partials. So inside your layouts folder, you have a folder called partials. And currently we're using it to pull out the head and the metadata for our website, but we can start adding some other partials in here. Like we, for instance, we could add a hero.html. Then we could add a grid.html. And let's add a blurb. Whoops, that's not gonna, that's not gonna do it. Um, let's come back in here, layouts partials and let's add a blurb.html. Okay, so we have those new HTML files and let's just add a little bit of markup to them so we can see that there's something being printed here. So I'm going to do an H3, let's just H3 this and I'm going to say um, this is a hero. I'm going to save that and then I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to put it in the grid. We'll call this one a grid. We'll save that and we'll put it in the blurb as well and say that this is the blurb. Okay, so now that we have those templates set up, we can come back to our list.html file and we could just start looping through these and adding those to the page. So let's come up here and let's just say, if we have, let's check if the component exists in our data source. So for instance, let's say if we have a hero, so that's getting our, our key out of that, then, and let's end the, the if statement as well here. Oops. So let's end it. So if we have a hero, let's reference our partial We'll do a partial reference. And let's say that uh, we want the hero.html file. So let's give that a save and see what happens when we do that. Okay. 
So I guess this you know isn't style this uh, H3 here. If we take a look, it's probably hopefully an H3. Okay, so this is a hero. So this is coming through now, and we could come through here and we could actually do something similar for our other components. So let's just copy and paste this a couple times. So let's check for a grid. And let's check for a blurb. Okay, so if we save those, we come. So now we see that we're getting a hero, a grid, and a blurb. That's cool, but we're not really using our data source, right? So we're, we're using in some sense. We're saying, okay, put this HTML on the page if we find something in our data source that corresponds to it. But we're not really using any of the data from it. So this says, I'm a hero, I'm a grid, I'm a blurb, but we're really saying, this is a hero, this is a grid, this is a blurb. So how do we get these values from here and how do we pass them to the individual templates here? Okay, well, we can do something like this. So where we're referencing the partial, we can add a dictionary and we could name the index of that dictionary. So if you're not familiar with dictionaries, just think of it as like a named key value pair for, for like an array. Um, and we're going to name our key hero, and then we're going to pass the hero context here. And we're going to do a similar thing for each one of these. So let me just copy this, and let's paste this, but let's change this to grid. And let's just do this again. And we'll say blurb dot blurb. And OK, so let's just make sure this is still running. OK, that looks OK. But now let's actually pull some of the information out of here. So since we're passing, so for instance, we have the blurb, we're passing this blurb context in here as the blurb value. We can come and we can start grabbing that information out. So we could just print this template. We could say, well, give us the dot blurb value and let's just save that and take a look okay so you see how this one changed here it says I'm a blurb and these other ones are using like the the um, hard-coded stuff so we could come in and we could change that for all of them for instance let's go to our grid let's change this to I'm a grid dot grid save that and let's go to our hero and do the same thing Okay, so now we're getting value from our data source. That's all good, but I think we can do better than this. So right now, if we're going through and we're, we're hooking up some of the scaffolding, it's a multi-step process, right? So we come in here, we go to our data source, we add a component we want. And actually, let me just demonstrate real quick that how dynamic this is, right? So we could grab something like this now, and we could paste another hero. And actually, let's just say hero like this and save that and you'll see that we now get this new hero component there so these are dynamic you can add and remove these from your data source and you can duplicate them and there's not really any restrictions to that but it's kind of annoying when you want to get to a new component right so if we wanted to add a new type of component we have to come in here we have to add it to our data source we have to come in here we have to add it to where we're kind of looping through them on any page that we're doing that and then we have to go and we have to actually create a sca like a component scaffolding for it so i think Right here seems like an obvious place that we can make this a little bit simplified so we don't have to touch this when we do it. So let's take a look at what we might want to do there. So I'm going to come back and I'm just going to once again print the full context of this for loop. So whatever the params.component is at the time. Let's come here. So again, we see that we're getting this map here and we have the key and the value. So we might want to actually hop into each one of these maps and start pulling out values that way. So I'm going to actually add another for loop or another range. And we really want to range on that dot now, so that current context. But, and we could actually, let's just take a look at what this might look like. Let's grab that and let's, let's move this dot inside here so we're getting the new unpack context. So you're, now you're seeing the values, right? So now we're getting the values out of 
this data source here, this index.markdown, we're getting these values out. But if we want to also get the index out, because we want to know what components we're getting, we want to probably update this to have a little bit more information. So a way you can pull key value pairs out of these ranges in Hugo is you can actually do something like this. You can do key, comma, value, uh, value, um, colon equals, and that's how you instantiate a new variable in, in Go. So do a colon equals that context, and now we can do something like this, and we can pull that key out of that current value in that for loop. And if we come here, so now we can see that we're getting the exact value. So we're getting, the, this is a hero component, this is a grid, this is a blurb, this is a hero. So that's gonna be helpful for determining which partials that we actually wanna use in our system. So let's think about this. We can grab this as a template to start. Let's put this partial inside of our new for loop here. Uh, okay, and we don't need this key anymore. Let's get rid of that key information. And I'm going to rename this actually. So I think component is a better name for this variable just because that's the value we're actually getting there. And this is probably a better name would be data. So this is the data that we're, we're getting out of that component. And instead of just print hard coding this hero.html in here, we could come in and we could basically concatenate that component value with .html so we can pull in that partial. And the way I'm gonna do that in here is I'm gonna use a function called printf. And then I'm going to trade this word hero for a replacement pattern. So a percent %s replacement pattern here. And then I'm going to pass the value that I wanna replace with. So that's going to be component. And then, so that, that takes care of the referencing the partial. And then how do we actually go and pass the correct context in there? Well, basically this value is just a string of our component, right? So I'm gonna pass our component here. And then the context, the value that we actually wanna pass is the data. So we can come in here and instead of this hero context, we can just pass the data. And I'm going to save that. Can, can you all see what I'm doing here pretty well? Okay, so save that. And if we come here, so now we're seeing, and it's kind of hard because the, these components aren't doing much besides printing a title, but we're actually going through and, um, I'm trying to think if that actually worked. Um, okay, so now we're actually going through and we're, we're printing this data kind of in the same way we were printing it before. So we don't really need all these anymore, right? We can delete all these individual references because now we're, we're automatically picking up on those. And if we were to add a new type of component, it's gonna automatically know about that system and it's gonna, it's gonna work in that way. So we have our hero, we have our grid, we have our blurb and our hero. So awesome, that's all working. And if we were to add maybe like a new type of component, so um, let's just say a text block. Let's say here's some cool text and we were to save that, it's gonna break initially. So if we go to our site, it's gonna break because we haven't actually defined the template for it. So let's just take a look. So that's broken, okay. But now all we have to do is actually come into our partials and just add a new template for text underscore block dot HTML. And let's just open this up and we'll say maybe something like div this is a text well, um, text block, I guess. We're just gonna hard code it for now. You could get the data out of it the same way you got the data out of anything else. But let's, let's hard code that in there. And okay, so now we have our text block in there. So it became a lot more simple to actually add a new type of component, even though you know we didn't have to rig up any of that stuff that we did before. Okay, so I think we're close here, um, but I, I think we need to push this a little farther to make this useful, right? So if we're looking at these data sources, these are pretty one dimensional at this time. So we're probably gonna wanna update these to have more information included in them. Then you're basically creating a general API for what your, your component is going to look like, right? So like a hero component maybe for instance has two elements to it. Like it has, um, let's just say a title and it also has um, a color and we'll say that the color's pink. And we save that, and then we would basically have to come in here, and we'd have to think about updating our hero.html. So um, now our, our 
our information here, this is going to print out the whole map of what that is. So if we came over here and took a look, so now we're getting pink and title hero, but we could reference the individual values in here by coming in and saying, okay, hero.title now, and maybe we want style equal background color, and then do a dot hero dot color, oops, and save that. I didn't like that. Um, style background color, hero dot color, hero dot title. Um, is my YAML syntax not correct? That should work. Does anyone see what I'm doing here? Does anyone know what I'm doing at all in this? No? Okay. Um, hmm. Hero title. Well, that's. I'm missing the quote, double quote area. Where at? Uh, background. Oh, no. No, I think, okay. I think that's okay. Wait, I'm in the hero. Yeah, I'm in the hero. That HTML. Is it front matter? You have the dash. You don't have it in front of title and color. Does that matter? I don't think here, I have some you know I don't think it does that's a that's a good observation I have some notes here let's take a look here at what I'm doing here so we're down here in the expand this I'm a hero hero dot color well let's try this do you know what I might try updating this to pass the context this way. Let me see if that does anything. Oops. Got to stop going crazy with that. And that's an, okay. Build execute default list executing content partial. What is this? Here from the, you have a second hero definition that's not in the object. Oh. Why not? Oh. Uh oh. Is there a flaw in my. Okay. Okay, so, oh, yes, because it's not using the correct con. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I was like, well, we should be able to use, have multiple components. Thank you. Okay. That's what happens when you do live demos and you're just kind of. Wing and we're doing. Okay, so this is the second hero. So we weren't using, again, so this is actually a great um, example, right? We weren't using the correct API. We were trying to pass a flat value, but we've updated this API now to say, hey, we need to have a title and a color here. So let's say second hero and blue. Okay, so that's actually a good example. So we come in here. Okay, so now we, we can update the heroes that way. Thank you, that was a great observation. Um, okay, so, so that's how you can start like adding more information to some of these um, these components. Let's just do another quick example here. I think this will be helpful. So if you're not sold on this yet, let's just say, okay, a grid can have a title and then maybe it has something like items and then in its items it has items that have a title that say um, item one and then there's a description that says I'm the first item and then maybe we have something like item two and description second okay we save that and then if we were to come into our item template here or sorry our grid template we'd have to again update this so we'd have to change this to use the the title now and then we could do something like this we could range in here and we could say okay well range over the dot grid grid items and send that and then inside here we could say for instance um, 
actually let's do this let's use I think we got Bulma enabled here we could do div uh, class equals columns something like that and then in here we could say give me a div class equals column and we could grab the title from the current item we could grab the description from the current item and we could close our div and we should probably also close this div I know that's done kind of hastily let's see if that works okay so we have this kind of like um, little grid here with the items in there so uh, we have item one item two in there and then maybe we want these to stack on top of each other so we could wrap these like this wrap these in divs here and save that and okay so now we have like these little this little grid of items here and then we could very easily come back in here and we could add additional items to this list and it should automatically you know update the columns so let's just save that, come over here. So you see how that popped over. So since we're, I mean, this is basically, I think, just using like Flexbox or something like that on the back end. But we're using some Bulma CSS classes, which is a framework that we included in one of the previous tutorials. I mean, we're not using it very well. For the most part, we're using our own ugly styles. But we, we have access to those classes here if we want to use them. So you can kind of like just like add these components and update them pretty quickly. You could take, uh, let me just do one last example here, um, and then we'll, we'll hop over. Um, so we have this in our main template here in our list template we have this blog here so we can move this into a separate template so for instance I could grab this and say we only want the title and then whatever ooh, I almost fell off my chair whatever components um, we're referencing here so we could take that blog out there and then we could come over and we could say in our partials let's add a new template let's call it blog.html let's save this and then let's open that and paste our blog in there let's just move this over a little bit okay and now all we would pretty much have to do is in our template here uh, in our data source if we just come back in here and since this is again this is hard-coded so the blog template is actually just going through all the site pages and it's it's filtering it by only blog post content type and then it's pulling out like the link in the title so it's actually not pulling this from the data source at all. It's pulling this from all the data available in Hugo. So we could come into our index here and we could just define a new key. We'll call it blog. And then we don't have to pass anything to it. We just save it. Now there's one little quirk in this specific example. It's, this will break the site. So um, essentially what's happening here is since we're in this blog template, this context has changed. It's no longer in the main page template in that index um, or in that list template. So in order to just fix this, we can just update this variable to be underscore site. So this is a global variable within Hugo. So we're just going to save that as that. And that should give us access to all the regular pages throughout the site, filtered by blog posts. And then that should work. And again, we're getting our blog posts filtered down there. So you can see how you can just like separate these things in the components. And then you can really just reuse these and, um, you know, add various uh, components based on whatever your data source is. So you could just like add more text blocks or, or however you want to do it. And it should just kind of be like a new page builder here where you can like add things. It, it looks a little funky in this website because these all look like just text on a page, but you could see how you could make these like really visual. You could like reference images and have slide like sliders or, wh or whatever you want to basically create using this kind of um, uh, system. And then I think before I wrap it up, just the last thing I, I want to show is once you start diving deeper into this, you might run into performance issues. So if you really want to kind of like take a look at some of uh, the things that are slowing down your site. So Hugo is like based on this concept of building your assets really fast. And if your CI pipeline is running kind of slow, you can just do a Hugo command with the template metrics and it'll show you kind of where things are being bottlenecked. So I saw this in a tweet today, which I thought was pretty cool. So you can... Uh, Take a look here and see what's slowing down your templates, and you can find where where those slow points are and try to speed them up a little bit. But yeah, that, that basically concludes what I wanted to cover with changing this into components. Do we have any quick questions before I hand it over to Tim and we take a look at the Jamstack security stuff? 
Yes. Just sort of a general question about Hugo. Is there any advantage to using Hugo if you have a like a back end that's primarily Go? I mean, other than that, engineers would know. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. So I think so. If you have a back end that's primarily Go, I don't know. So it uses Go templates, right? So if they're familiar with writing Go templates, which has, again, it's probably it might be confusing to people who aren't used to it, but it has like. Um, all these things like the the range and the, the the dot context and all that stuff is gonna be really familiar to somebody who's familiar using Go. Now, in terms of like integrating data into a Hugo system, I don't personally know if there's any like like big advantages to that. I assume you'd still be using some kind of like API or something like that to to pull in the information. So I'm not sure Hugo will have any specific advantages for like a, a Go backend somewhere. I think the the other advantage is just the fast compilation time. So if you have lots of data, like thousands of pages, you're going to want something that builds pretty fast. So something like Hugo is going to build much faster than like a, like a Gatsby site. Although you don't get the advantages of like a single page app and the other stuff that Gatsby does. So it kind of depends on where you want those performance benefits, right? If you want them on your build process, which like if you have like a real time kind of CMS, like a get back CMS or something like that, Hugo is really, really great for something like that because you can make updates through like an interface and have it build and have that come back to you in real time much faster than something like Gatsby, but you don't have as fa that fast prefetching and, and things like that that happen with a Gatsby site that have the single page app kind of built into it. Does that make sense? Okay. Anyone else? Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, Tim, why don't you come up and wherever? Yeah, thanks.